Well, hello and how are you? Hey, friends. Welcome to the Shen Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe. Yes, sir. Hey, this here is Sunday, September 25th, 2016, B-Blog number 936. Yeah, that's right, 936. We're getting up there. You know, I don't have any birthdays to be yelling out today, so I'm not going to yell any out. No happy birthdays. Well, those of you that have been picking up and on my uh, YouTube site, maybe you've got a birthday out there, so happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear random viewers. Happy birthday to you and many more. There we go. Hey, that covers everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, no. Hey, had to do it. Well, it looks like uh, Oktoberfest is over, and the uh, last concert uh, that we had, freebie concert, was over. So, looks like we're looking at uh, getting into next year, or yeah, next month. So, it uh, looks like Saturday of next month, uh, the 1st, which will be October 1st on Saturday, um, the Augusta Brewery Company is opening up their uh, Augusta Bottoms Beer Festival. Now, of course, I think that's a paid uh, vendetta, so I really am not going to talk about that. And again, the Renaissance Festival will be up and running again. So, since how you won't have the... Uh, sorry about that. Since how you won't have the uh, uh, Oktoberfest to come down to, you can head yourself right on out to the Renaissance Festival out in Rotary Park in Wentzville, Missouri. That's 2577 Wentzville, uh, Meyer Drive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Renaissance Festival 2016. Open Wednesday, September 17th through October 16th. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Rain or shine. Festival site address is Rotary Park, 22577 Westmire Road, Winsville, Missouri. There's going to be tickets and theme, themed weekends, promotions, daily events, entertainment, uh, marketplaces. There's going to be people dressed up as uh, Renaissance characters. There might you might even see. Uh, Captain Jack Sparrow down there, it looks like. Let's hit some general information. Here. About the festival. I guess that's what we're on. Welcome to the 26th Fenway. About the Renaissance Festival. The St. Louis Renaissance Festival is a long-standing event that brings you the adventures, excitement, and spirit of, re of the Renaissance. Travel back in time as you step into a beautifully wooded 16th century Finch village we call Petit Lyon. There, a thrill to the e exploits of jousting knights on thundering steeds. A roam the village shops for unique crafts as our artesian demonstrators demonstrate period skills like blacksmithing and woodworking. Delight in comedy, music, magic, and more on our nine stages of nonstop entertainment. Fast on delicious, feast on delicious foods and drinks from the far reaches of the globe and interact with the colorful villagers, uh, nobles, peasants, and characters of all L ages past. Children will love the patates of games, oh, games and daily fees are free. Games and daily free activities. Adults will enjoy beer, wine, and mead at our three themed pubs. There is truly something for everyone at the St. Louis Renaissance Festival. Free parking. Live armed jousting, five time, five themed weekends, 12 stages in live entertainment, 100 local artisans, shops, food, drinks, and more. 
maps and directions are available by going to Fairs and Festivals St. Louis. That'd be uh, St. Louis Renaissance Fest dot com. So it'll be out here in St. Charles or in Wentzville, Missouri. So it's a little bit outside of St. Charles, but hey, it's gonna be a good fun time, so and it's free, so go on out there and and enjoy. And I guess Wentzville is still in St. Charles. It's not in Lincoln County or Warren County, so Alrighty, and I think that's it for the uh beginning of the month there so we'll just leave it at that did I tell you about uh, the other day when I got stuck over there at the uh, um, let's minimize this yeah there we go when I got stuck over there at, um, the uh, 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 um, Fred's yeah well I don't know if I did for sure or not. They've got this beautiful bush garden, which would be a, a flower, uh, it's a bush bed, which would be a flower bed except they have bushes in there instead of flowers. And it's got the uh, flower, the bushes, and then it's got the mulch all around it, and then it's got a six inch curb all the way around it. Well, I was trying to leave, and I think I did tell about this story, told you about my bicycle angel not being on a bicycle this time that's right okay scratch that that's get that'll be boring if you've heard it before uh-huh 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 yeah i'm looking into getting another new wheelchair kind of similar to the one i've got in the bedroom there maybe with a different seating system on it that's what i'm hoping to get um seating system that i'm looking at has a solid back which the only problem with that one in there is it's got a plastic back and with the severity of my muscle spasms I snapped that back within the first six to eight days of having it here so that's my next uh, project I'm gonna look into that and see if they'll replace that for me should be free of charge because I've only had the thing for a few months well I say a few months it's been over a year now, I think. But it's not been used. It's just been setting because it's got a broken back. So then I went with this Permobile. Perma, 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 Permobile. Which is a very good wheelchair. I mean, don't, don't, don't cut it out. I mean, heck, it climbed over a six-inch curb. At least one wheel of it did. Wasn't we're quite ready for it when it did. But I can usually go over to a four to yeah four to five inch curb. I can make it up over that, and then coming down, I can generally come down a six inch curb. But that you just got to tilt the chair back so you don't slam forward and fall out on your face. Of course, that's what happened to me coming down that hill. I was tilted back, and when the uh, caster hit the hole hit the uh, gully wash you know what a gully wash is that's where the wa rain water runs down across the same path in the uh, grass all the time and it makes the grass move out the makes a little gully from the water washing down it and we just call that a gully wash well anyway the gully wash caught my right front caster and flipped me right on over on the side of my chair inches of if it had been like a couple inches back, I'd have whacked my head in a tree. It wouldn't have been good. No. Might have knocked some sense into me, but it wouldn't have been good on my neck. So, I just got just got past the tree and flopsy doodle, laying on the side. Laying right down there in uh, Bum's Hollow. Uh, some of y'all may not know where that's at. That's in the uh, Blanchette Park where they do the sled riding each and every year. Yes, sir. I was there on my side waiting to uh, use my Bluetooth. You see the Bluetooth up over here hiding in my hair? Well, I had that Bluetooth and I punched it and called 911. They said, what is your location and what is your emergency? And I said, well, 
my uh, location is Bumps Hollow in Blanchett Park. And the uh, dispatcher had no idea where I was talking about. And I said, well, you know, where they do the sled riding in the wintertime. She said, why, sure, I know where that is. She said, what is your emergency? And I said, well, I'm a quadriplegic in a wheelchair, and I have fallen, and I can't get up. I know it's a tagline, but hey, if that's the uh, accurate statement, well, by golly, I'm going to use it. I told her, I says, well, if you just call the uh, uh, park rangers and tell them to come and get me, they can walk out their front door and they'll see me laying across the hill from them on the side of the hill away from them. So here about three seconds later, about Three of them park ranger cars come zipping out of the parking lot over there and come round about behind me and up on the uh, pavilion side of the hill and come cruising halfway down through them pavilions. They all crawled out and come down there, six of, six of them uh, park rangers, and they all standing around saying, we can't really do nothing for you until the uh, paramedics show up. So we had to wait on the... EMTs to get there. The po or the fire department. Fire department got there and said he's apparently all right. Let's just take him out of that chair and put it back up. And then I said, Oh no, no. Uh, your best bet is to leave me in the chair, clean the whole chair up, me included, and then bring me on down the hill. Well, no, they didn't. It was not their plan. They didn't bring me down the hill. They brought me back up the hill. So now I'm on top of the hill where I started. And now uh, I have to go the long way home, which I was trying to avoid because, well, I was trying to take a shortcut. But like I said, I was flipped over and I was laying there. And now if any of y'all know where Bums Hollow is, which I expect you do, we'll go on down there and on the pavilion side, over by the last pavilion, between the last two pavilions, you'll come down the hill about halfway, and you'll see a tree laying there. And you'll notice gully wash right next to it. And you'll notice that it's the uh, flattest area going down the hill. It's not straight up and down as much as the rest of the areas. That's why I was taking that spot. Anyway, you might find some loose change. I don't know, because I don't pick up my loose change when I flop over. Go figure. Anyway, hey, that's about all my time, so it looks like uh, time for that portion of the program I call the Daily Bread. So I'd like for y'all to turn your Bibles open to John 1, 1 John 1, and we'll be reading John 1 through 4. Now today's devotional was words that matter and words that matter pretty much have to do with uh it it comes to a time in somebody's life where they're going to accept jesus christ no matter how hard you prod no matter how hard you push you keep trying and trying and someday they're going to find just the right words that speak to them that's going to open their heart and they're going to find jesus it could be son you're going to die and, and that might be all it takes. But it could be something simple as something they read on the cover of a daily bread. Well, in this case, the story, the day's devotional, was just about about that. If you'd like the complete story, you can go to odb.org and subscribe to it and give them a little donation and read words that matter which is today's devotional so anyway if you're keeping up with your bible in a year you got songs of solomon uh six through eight and galatians four so there you have that let's go ahead and read john first john one through four first john one one through four that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked and 
and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it, and it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. And there you have it. It was quite short today. But that doesn't mean that the V-blog is short. It may be. But that about wraps it up. So I'm going to say, well, hello and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shen Show. Um, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So, come back and see me tomorrow. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't sing. How about if I sing? Goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. I said, goodbye, my friends, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. Goodbye, my friends, goodbye. And again, thanks for tuning in and enjoying the Shen Show. You know, God loves you and so do I, so be blessed in Jesus' name. And come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here and I hope you are too.